In this video we'll be covering everything you need to know to get your wire welder ready for use. This information relates specifically to the Hobart Handler 187, but in general applies to any wire welder commonly available today. The Handler 187 can be set up to use either flux core wire which doesn't require any shielding gas or solid wire which does require gas. Welding with solid wire and using shielding gas is what is commonly referred to as MIG welding. The first thing we want to make sure of before getting started is that the power cord is unplugged. On the front panel, turn the power switch off, the feed speed all the way down, and do the same with the voltage. For the rest of the setup, we'll be working in the area behind the side cover, so open it now. If it has not been done already, release the wire feed mechanism. In front of the wire feed mechanism, there should be a thumb screw. This thumb screw might also be in a bag of fasteners that came in the box with the welder. This thumb screw is what keeps the cable held in place. Make sure it is loosened or removed before attempting to insert the cable in the front of the welder. This is where the cable goes in. There's another hole for the ground cable. Below this there's another hole, but the screw is already installed so we can just ignore it. Note that in some cases the cable liner may need to be installed in the cable before continuing with the next step. Plug in the main welding cable, taking care not to tear the O-rings. Make sure it's in all the way. When it is, the cable liner should be just in front of the wire feed rollers. If this isn't done correctly, the shielding gas will leak here and some or all of it may not reach the weld area. Securely tighten the thumb screw. This will prevent the cable from being pulled out accidentally. These are the wires from the switch on the gun. Tuck these through the same hole. These plug in above the feed rollers. Next we'll be attaching the ground clamp. The cable should have a ring terminal on the end. This goes through the other hole. Inside there are some channels for the ground cable to route through. The Hobart handler comes with a short roll of flux core wire. For this and all flux core wires, connect the ground clamp to the positive terminal and the gun to the negative terminal. This is called straight polarity. For MIG welding with solid core wires, connect the gun to the positive terminal and the ground clamp to the negative. This is called reverse polarity. The terminals inside the welder are marked plus for positive and minus for negative. For the next few steps we'll assume you'll be using solid wire. This is a cable that carries power to the gun. You can see it connects near the feed mechanism. Connect this cable to the positive terminal. Use a wrench to snug up the nut. If these connections are loose, the high current will cause them to heat up, causing damage inside your welder. Now connect the cable that goes to the ground clamp to the negative terminal. Use a wrench to snug up this one as well. To install a roll of wire, first you will need to remove the nut spring and a washer. Then the spool adapter comes off. Now put on the spool so that the wire comes off of the bottom. 
Some spools have a larger hole and use the spool adapter. Replace the washer, spring, and nut in the order which they were removed. Set the spring tension as shown here. The spool should just come to a stop. Not enough tension can cause the wire to unroll as the spool keeps spinning. Too much tension can cause the wire to stop feeding. Check the feed roller to make sure it matches the diameter of wire you're using. To remove the feed roller, push it in and turn it 90 degrees. The feed roller in the Handler 187 has two different size grooves for different diameters of wire. Reinstall it so that the markings indicating the size wire you're using are facing you. You should not be able to turn the roller by hand when it is installed properly. Next you want to cut off any bends in the wire. Even a slight bend can cause the wire to jam in the liner. Release the tension on the feed rollers and open them as shown earlier in the video if you have not done so already. Now take the wire and feed it through the guide over the roller and into the liner. Making sure the wire is in the correct groove on the bottom roller, close the feed rollers and apply tension. Remove the shield cup from the gun. If there is a tip installed, remove it, preferably using welding pliers. Other pliers also work, but with large pliers, be careful not to crush the tip. Plug in the welder. Turn on the welder and turn the feed speed all the way up. Now that the welder is powered up, the welding circuits are live. Take care not to use your body to complete the circuit or you could get a shock. You might want to put on welding gloves. Now take the gun and press the button to feed the wire down the cable. Do not aim the gun at people or animals. The wire is sharp, comes out fast, and can cut you. If the wire isn't feeding, check the feed rolls. You may need more tension on the rollers. Turning the knob clockwise increases the tension. Turning the knob counterclockwise reduces the tension. Too much tension will cause the wire to bird's nest if it jams up and can even flatten the wire. When wire finally comes out of the gun, you'll probably end up with too much. Release the tension on the drive rolls and roll the wire back up onto the spool until you have about an inch of stick out. Then re-engage the drive rolls, or you can just cut off the excess. Select the tip which matches the diameter of wire you're using. Slip the tip over the wire and reinstall it. Take your welding pliers and snug it up. If the welder is still on, remember that the circuit is live. Either wear welding gloves or don't touch the ground clamp and the wire at the same time. Reinstall the shield cup. This is optional if you're not using shielding gas. You should now have about a quarter to a half inch of stick out. Underneath the power cord you'll see a red plastic plug. This is the hose connection for the tank of shielding gas. It's a good idea to put the plug back in if you're not using shielding gas. If dirt gets in here, it'd be very difficult to clean out. 
Congratulations, your welder is set up and ready to go. If you need help setting the correct voltage and feed speed for welding, check out the enclosed instruction book. Or better yet, see one of the welding videos. Always remember, never weld without a welding mask. In the video description, you'll find a link to a text file that can be printed out. Happy welding!